Now that you know how geospatial datasets are stored on your computer, and we've been introduced to QGIS Browser, let's look at QGIS Desktop and see how GIS data layers look within the desktop environment. QGIS Desktop is the application you'll use for setting up and making maps and conducting GIS analyses. The screen of QGIS Desktop is divided into two main sections. On the right is the map window where your data will appear, and on the left is the layers panel. The QGIS desktop interface can become a little cluttered with extra panels. So let's take a look at how to arrange our GUI in our desktop environment by closing some of these panels. Right now I have two panels open. I have the layers panel and this layer order panel. If I want to close one of these and just remove it, I can click the X in the upper right hand corner and it is dismissed. These panels can also be docked and undocked from the QGIS desktop window. To undock a panel, such as this Layers panel, I can click on the title header and drag it away from the left-hand side until it's just a free-floating window. To redock this panel, I can simply drag the title bar over to the left-hand side until this box appears where it will be situated, and then I can release the mouse, and it will occupy that space and be docked to the left-hand side of QGIS Desktop. Now let's add some data. QGIS has add data buttons along the left hand side here for adding both major data models, vector data and raster data. I'll begin by adding a vector data layer. I'll click the add vector layer button and I'll click browse. I'm going to navigate to my C drive, into the course folder, into the module 2 data folder. This new window that I'm using to navigate to my lab data is called the Open and OGR Supported Vector Layer Window. OGR is another FOS4G project whose sole purpose is to read and write geospatial vector data files. In the lower right hand corner there's a file format filter. I can click the drop down and I can see all the different kinds of vector data file formats that QGIS will read. Since I know my data is going to be in a shapefile format, I'll set this filter to Esri shapefiles. Now I'm only going to see the shapefiles within my data folder. Setting a filter like this just helps you reduce clutter when you're looking for data. I'm going to select Hawaii counties, click open, and click open again on the add vector layer window, and my data is added to both the map view and as a layer within the layers panel. When we add a vector layer to QGIS desktop, QGIS will choose a random color, in this case it's purple. You'll learn how to change those default colors in a future lab. Next, let's examine the attributes. To do this, I'll right-click on my layer in the Layers panel, and I get a context menu. From this context menu, I'm going to choose Open Attribute Table. And the Attribute Table opens in a new window. This is the same data that we previewed on the Attributes tab in QGIS Browser in the last task. And from here, we can click the header of one of the columns and sort the data. For now I'll close the attribute table. We'll learn more about attribute tables in future labs. I can also use the identify tool to interact with both the spatial features and the attributes. The identify tool is located up here in this toolbar, the little eye icon. I'm going to click that and click on one of my features. Sometimes this identify results will open as a panel like this. As I showed before, I can undock this Identify Results window to make it a free-floating window and expand it so I can see the results. And here I'm seeing my different attribute columns and the values for that feature for, that, for those columns. If I click on a different feature, I'll see the results for that feature appear in the Identify Results window. I'm done with that. I'm going to close the Identify Results window. Now let's add a raster data set to QGIS. I'll click the Add Raster Layer button. This opens the Open a Google supported raster data source. Whereas QGIS uses OGR to open vector data files, here it uses another FOS4G project called Google. Google is another software library that QGIS uses, and it's software for reading and writing raster data sets. It too has a filter down here, but first let me navigate to my course data folder. I'll click this drop down filter, and there are even more raster types than vector types that QGIS can read and write. Here I'm going to set this filter to ERDAS JPEG 2000. I'm going to select my Oahu Landsat 
raster and click open and it gets added to the map. So you see we now have two layers in the layers panel and this layer covers a much smaller spatial extent than Hawaii counties. So let's zoom into it. To do this I'm going to right click on this new layer. From the context menu I'll choose zoom to layer and we zoom to the spatial extent of that new layer. To explore some of the other data in the Lab 2 folder. I'm going to bring up QGIS browser again and you'll notice that there are these two folders, Hiloa and Info. Together these combine to make another geospatial raster dataset format named a grid. The Info folder holds the attributes and always has the same name, Info. The other folder is the layer name and contains the spatial data. So let's go ahead and add this grid dataset to QGIS Desktop. I'll bring up QGIS Desktop again and I'll click on the Add Raster Data button. It defaults to the last location I was in, my lab folder, but I need to change the filter. So I've scrolled to the top, but I'm going to choose ArcInfo Binary Grid. Next, I'll double click on the Hiloa layer to go inside that folder and select this hdr.adf file. This will be the layer that I add to my map for a grid. I'll click Open, and it's added to the map. This is a hillshade image of Oahu, and it represents the terrain. QGIS Desktop also has a browser panel. To enable this, I'm going to right-click in the space past the Help menu, and I get a drop-down that shows me on the top different panels that I can add, and on the bottom different toolbars that I can add. I'm going to check the browser panel, and it gets added down here. Another thing we can do with this GUI is we can undock this browser panel and drag it onto the Layers panel, and it will now become a tab, so you have access to both without them taking up any additional space. Data is often stored deep inside a series of folders, and it's often tedious and time-consuming to navigate deep inside folders to gain access to the data. And you'll notice there's an item up here called Favorites. Favorites provide a way to create shortcuts directly to any folder so that you have one-click access. So right now I'm going to select my Lab 2 data folder, I'm going to right click on it and choose add as a favorite. And you can see it's now added a link to this folder under favorites so that I can quickly access my lab data. I can always remove this by right clicking on my new favorite and choose remove if I want to get rid of it at some point. So you can add and remove connections to favorite folders as you need to. One note on this functionality of adding favorites, currently at version 2.8 this is reserved for just the browser panel within QGIS Desktop. This functionality is not available in the QGIS Browser standalone application. Although once I do set a favorite within the panel of QGIS Desktop, it will be available in QGIS Browser. So I'll collapse C, so we're just seeing our lab folder under Favorites. Uh, there's another shapefile here, and another convenient way that you can add data to QGIS Desktop is to locate it within the browser panel and just simply drag it onto the map. If I go to the Layers tab, I'll see that this new State Routes line layer has now been added. It came in with a default color of light blue, which makes it a little difficult to see. But again, we will learn how to change symbology in a future lab. In this lab, you've explored data sets that use the two common geospatial data models, vector and raster. QGIS browser is used to preview data sets. QGIS Desktop is used to make maps and perform analyses.